Hey guys, Thing Fishy here. So, all achievements. Believe it or not, I've never actually got all achievements in Elden Ring. So in this three-part series, I'm going to play through the game three times for an epic all achievements adventure. You can get all of them in one run if you make save files for the endings, but where's the fun in that? To get set up, I followed my standard setup guide. You need both the smithings and the sombers for this run. Because the two builds I had planned for New Game Plus and New Game Plus 2 were both pretty complicated, I wanted to do something simple for the first run. So I went with my favourite type of build, a buckler and a fuck off hammer, specifically the big red one. The prelate's Inferno Crozier is a little harder to set up, so if you want the simple option, just grab the Giant Crusher from Altus during the setup instead. The Giant Crusher, however, isn't red. So I went first to the Purified Ruins in Lyurnia to grab the Two Finger Heirloom. Then followed this route from the Red Main Bridge for my favourite Ash of War. Then to Fort Gale and round the back to grab Flame Grant Me Strength. Drop down the cliffs to the southeast of the Church of Pilgrimage and grab the Faith Tear. Now for Cavalry and Grail to level ourselves up. The fire prelate who drops the big red hammer is very tanky. So we need something big and leveled up to kill him easily. To get this, I went back to the first step and had a scrap with the tree sentinel to grab the golden halberd. The unleveled morning star is your best bet here. With our leveled character, golden vow, flame grant me strength and crag blade, the tree sentinel will go down pretty easily. Take the halberd to EG and level it to plus six. Now to get our hammer. Equip the strength and faith tiers, buff with golden vow and flame grant me strength before the fight. All it takes to kill him is two charges and a single war one. Now I wanted some cool fashion for this run, so I headed to the Stillwater Cave in Leonia for the Sage's Robes. And because we know we're heading into New Game Plus, we want as many runes as possible in this run, so head to Kaelid to the Abandoned Cave. This cave is a bit of a nightmare casually, but because we have Bloodhound Step, we don't actually have to deal with any of the rock. Jump down into the first pool and Bloodhound step through it. Then follow this route through the rest of the cave to avoid the rot entirely. For the boss, use the Golden Halberd to stunlock both of them for an easy fight. Now because the hammer costs a ton to level up, it's not going to be plus 16 right away, but it's still pretty good. Like the Giant Crusher, this hammer has a unique charged R2 that's particularly good for smaller enemies and does a whole lot of damage. At the end of every fight on this run, as soon as the boss dies, you want to switch one of your talismans to the Golden Scarab to get 20% more runes for the entire run. I thought there'd be a few jokes in this video about me forgetting to equip it. As it turns out, I had the opposite problem. 
I forgot to unequip it after basically every fight, so I had this talisman on reducing my power for pretty much the whole run. The other way of running this weapon is using its Ash of War along with fire and even regen buffs. I didn't want to go down that route in this run and without the buffs this attack isn't great so stick to your standard attacks. At this point we nearly have enough runes to plus 16 the hammer but you need a few thousand more so pick a boss of your choice and go beat them up for some extra runes. And we're plus 16 just in time for the first big fight of the run. We are killing Wolf, Renala, Noble and Rykard on this run. So feel free to do any or all of them before Radan if you prefer. Go to the walking mausoleum in Weeping to dupe Radan's remembrance for the extra runes. Now back to Enya at the round table hold to grab the third talisman pouch, and if you want to, buy a cool hat. Now for another thing that I don't do very often. Head to the tower in Stormvale to grab Godric's great rune. I don't know what it is about Elden Ring, but I almost never use the Great Runes. In Dark Souls 3, however, I'm always Embered, and Godric's Great Rune is way better than an Ember, so I really should get in the habit of using this. You can buy Rune Arcs from several merchants, so spend all of your spare runes on them for the rest of the game. You can also find a few along the way if you get into the habit of picking up everything that you run past. So for all achievements, there are four trophies that require most of the work. We're going to focus on one of them in this first playthrough, the legendary spells and incantations. The first few are very easy. First head to the Evergile in Lyurnia to bully Adan for the Flame of the Fell God incantation. Then to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion to buy Grail's Roar. Then ride around Mount Gelmir, through the Hermit's Village, past the Demi-Human Queen mini-boss, to grab Comet Azure. For the next one we need to do the first part of Selen's questline, so to the Waypoint Ruins back in Limgrave, to bully the Pumpkin Head and speak to her for the Seal Breaker. This allows you to break a seal in the Celia Hideaway, next to the Church of the Plague in Kaelid. I'm going to leave it to you to find it if you don't know where this one is. Run across the crystals, spam roll past the mage and drop down to the bottom behind him. We don't meet the requirements to one hand the hammer yet, but this thing does so much damage that it doesn't matter. Break the seal and speak to Lusat for the Stars of Ruin spell. Now back to the main game for a bit, to the Lux Ruins, to bully the Demi-Human Queen for the Ritual Shield Talisman. If I were you, I'd equip this in your first talisman pouch, as it sits right next to the golden scarab in your inventory, so it's really quick to switch from this to the scarab. And as I was doing a chargey bonk build again, this is where I gave into temptation and added Cragblade to the hammer, despite promising not to use it again until the DLC. I've wanted to try Cragblade on Giant Crusher for ages, and this is pretty much the same thing. Royal Knights Resolve and Endure are good alternatives for this weapon, but it does absolutely shred with Crackplay. Play. 
for parrying Draconic Sentinels and Loretta's with this weapon. After a parry in Chargy, you have just enough time to roll out of the next attack if it's a quick one, but you don't have enough time to parry, so keep that in mind. For extra runes, bully the avatar in the capital for the Lord's Rune. Godfrey is as easy as it gets. Rolling or standard R1s will get you a stagger just after half health, and the fight's over from there. For Morgoth, get stuck in with as many attacks as possible before the dagger attack, then a charge you when he does it. All that's left is one more in phase two. In the mountaintops, ride through the Zamor ruins to grab the Smithing Bell 3 from the cellar, as well as the other Smithing 7s nearby. Link in the description to those if you don't know where they are. Now for Millicent's questline, which we need to do for later. Sneak up on Commander O'Neill for two charges and a riposte. He'll then hit you with the tornado. But one more straight after and he's done before he can summon. Take the needle to Gowry for repair, then give it to Millicent. Head up to the shaded castle in Altus and grab the Valkyrie's prosthesis. Then speak to Millicent again at the Erd Tree Gazing Hill. Now to the Windmill Village. Run past the Apostle and quit out. Then sneak up behind him for a very easy fight. Finally, speak to Millicent at the Mountaintop's Grace. Another thing we're going to need for later is the Magic Scorpion Charm. So grab the two Starlight Shards from Limgrave. Head to Altus for the Amber Starlight, following this route from the Highway Grace. Now to Caria Manor to bully Loretta. Check out Celevus's puppet dungeon, then speak to him after Rani. After giving the potion to Gideon in the Round Table Hold, Exhausting Celevus's dialogue and quitting out four times, he'll tell you his scheme and give you the charm. We're doing all remembrances in this run for maximum runes, so if you haven't already, head to Rhea Lucaria for Wolf and Renala. They're very hard fights at this level. Now to make our way to Volcano Manor for Noborn Rykard. On the way up, it's worth picking up the Golden Vow spell in the shack and picking up the Somber Five near the first Mount Gelmir campsite grace. Godskin Noble parry fights don't get much better than this. While heading through the dungeon, bonk this little scarab by the lava pools for another somber stone. Then through the stone sword key gate as usual, grabbing the dagger talisman on the way down to the somber seven on the balcony by the abductor. Same strategy as always for a Rikard. Lance in the right hand, Serpent Hunter in the left, Crouch L1, Crouch L1, 
till he's dead. Using Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow again at the end of Phase 1 for extra damage. Speak to Alexander in Radan's Arena, then again at Mount Gelmir to continue his questline. In the mountaintops we need to grab another legendary spell. On the invisible bridge, when you're near the end of it, if you look very carefully you'll see a slightly bluish mist. It can be quite hard to see, especially when there's a massive red bonk in the way. But by walking up it, you can access the heretic's rise and grab founding rain of stars. Now for Fire Giant, and he's pretty easy even if he's as uncooperative as he was for me. And phase two with this weapon is super satisfying. Before we head to Faramazula, we're going to complete Rani's questline. So speak to the doll at the Grace, bully Blyde, then be Astal. Grab the key from the chest in Renala's room and head up to the Moonlight Altar for the Chinola Rise puzzle. If you know how to beat this puzzle, you're good. But if you don't, I'm not going to spoil it for you, as it drove me crazy in my first playthrough and ended up being one of my favourites in the game. After unlocking the rise, you can grab Rani's Dark Moon from the top. Run through Farum, picking up everything you see along the way. There's a bunch of upgrade stones in this area that will save us some cash later. There's nothing to say about Duo with this weapon. Charges and reposts for the win. Back to the round table, buying the extra smithing stones you need to max out your weapon for another trophy. Now before heading to Beast, I wanted the Blasphemous Claw for this character so we can do shenanigans with Malaketh. So speak to Banal, in Volcano Manor, then fight him by heading down the Great Bridge. Now with this weapon's posture damage and crag blade, we don't need to worry about being fancy to script staggers. Get stuck in and you'll likely get one in both phases. This Malaketh fight was a real emotional roller coaster. Now for Commander Nile, one shot the summons, parry the electric foot's follow up, then dodge the big tornado attack and the fight's over.
Now for some bosses I haven't fought in a while. Beating the Mimic in Nokron will reward you another trophy. And I can't honestly say that I've missed the Gargs, but at this level they go down pretty easily. Now for our last legendary incantation. Across the branches in deep root depths and follow this one up to the right. When you get into the mouth of the cave, buff as if you're heading into a boss fight. Walk into the first cave and start smashing ants. You'll one-shot them one-handed with all of the buffs active. Every one of the queens here drops a rune arc and a Newman's rune, so they're well worth it. This first bit is optional, but it makes the next bit less scary. Drop down onto the lower level and pop all of the queens for rune arcs and runes, then head out to the exit for Elden Stars to complete the achievement. Fortisax, however, gave me a gentle reminder that I should come see him more often, as he beats seven shades of shit out of me. We have enough damage and health to brute force this one though, luckily. Now head to the teleporter in the snowfield, and into Mogwin's palace for Mo. On the way up, Chuck something at one of the pillars to grab yourself a somber ten. If you want to go for the safest strategy here, go for R1s between all of his attacks until you get the stagger. After that, two charges will kill him before phase two even starts. Now in preparation for New Game Plus, I grabbed two sacred tiers that I don't usually bother with. First at the Church of Repose, with the 2022 pvp -er, and the other at the Second Church, with Eleonora. Now time for the best part of the run. For Godfrey Horalu, get stuck in until Godfrey staggers, but go for a chargey rather than taking the riposte. Then build up some posture damage before the phase transition.
Nothing much to say about Elden Beast. Charge ease whenever you can for posture damage, and this fight will be a lot shorter than it is on other builds. Now to the Hadig tree for Loretta. As long as you keep in mind that earlier advice about a parrying strat, this is a pretty easy fight. Use either of the big blue attacks for opportunities for charges. Next up, Melania, and this weapon puts itself in the very small group of weapons that absolutely annihilate her. Three parries, a riposte, then two charges. Do that twice for phase one, then once at the start of phase two. After this, she'll do the flower attack. Then you can run in for the final charges. Based on my experience, there is a 50% chance she'll do waterfowl and kill you straight after this. This was the second attempt at this fight because she did exactly that on the first. Now for Plassey, play it safe and keep buff with Cragblade. This weapon will give you plenty of staggers for an easy fight. And that's almost everything we have to do for this run. We have most of the Remembrance bosses done, one of the tricky achievements, and one of the three needed endings. We want to grab another larval tier to go along with the one we got earlier from the Mimic. This guy in Limgrave drops one, if you're looking for an easy one. All we need to do now is go grab the stuff we need for our next build.